Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Ipshita. Today let's learn about Staphyloma. So what is it? Staphylomas are localized bulging or ectasia of the weak and thin outer tunic of the eyeball. So the outer tunic of the eyeball involves the cornea, sclera. So Staphyloma is either involvement or bulging or ectasia of the cornea or the sclera or both of them together with incarceration of the uveal tissue that is the uveal tissue shines through the thinned out fibrous coat so what are the types there can be anterior intercalary ciliary equatorial and posterior staphyloma so five types depending on the position so anything involving the cornea only is anterior the limbus and two millimeter from it is your intercalary staphyloma Ciliary is 8 mm from the limbus, equatorial is 14 mm from the limbus and posterior is involving the posterior pole. So let's take them one by one. Anterior staphyloma. This is associated with ectasia of the cornea. This can be partial or total depending on the amount of cornea that is involved. The initiating event can be an injury or can be an corneal ulcer which leads to perforation. Once a perforation occurs, there occurs a pseudoconia formation, which is made up of exudates and fibrous tissues. So the pseudoconia has an internal lining by iris and externally by new epithelium. So the anterior surface is weak and it protrudes out, resulting in the formation of your anterior staphyloma. This could be associated with a flat anterior chamber and with secondary glaucoma. So how do we treat anterior staphyloma? Firstly, we need to return the iris to the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber needs to be formed, the perforation needs to be repaired and if need be, transplanting a second lamellar graft may be necessary. The second type, intercalary staphyloma. So this is a staphyloma extending from the limbus to up to 2 mm beyond the limbus. This is lined by root of the iris or anterior most part of the ciliary body. What are the causes? The causes are in weak, when there is a weakening of the globe like either due to different reasons like a perforating injury or of the peripheral cornea or a marginal corneal ulcer due to anterior scleritis or scleromalacia perforance or due to a cataract surgery complication with unopposing wounds. So intercalary staphyloma is associated with defective vision due to marked corneal astigmatism and secondary angle closure glaucoma. How do we treat this? A localized staphylectomy that the localized region can be removed under heavy dose of oral steroids. The third type is ciliary staphyloma. So the, this is involving the ciliary zone up to 8 mm beyond the limbus. Here the ciliary body is incarcerated. It is a bluish color with lobulated surface as we can see in the picture. So what causes ciliary staphyloma? It can be due to developmental glaucoma, primary or secondary glaucoma, due to trauma or scleritis. The fourth is equatorial staphyloma. This involves the equatorial region of the eye, like 14 mm away from the limbus. This is incarcerated by choroid. This is a relatively weak area due to passage of vena vorticose, which and the weakness leads to the formation of staphyloma. The causes are almost similar like scleritis, degenerative myopia and chronic uncontrolled glaucoma. The last type is posterior staphyloma. It involves the posterior pole of the eye. This is incarcerated by choroid. This is a B-scan image showing the posterior staphyloma. What are the causes? Causes are degenerative myopia is the most common cause. Then posterior scleritis or injury can also cause posterior staphyloma. So it is not visible externally. So diagnosis uh, cannot be done externally. On fundoscopy, we see the posterior outward curvature of the globe. So here, if you can see, there's a dip. So this area has a staphyloma, this whole area. 
uh, there's a crescentric shadow in the macular region may be present the retinal vessels are dipping down we can see the dip and the area of the staphyloma is pale due to degenerative changes the stretching of the retina and the choroid uh, becomes exposed quite often uh, b scan can be used for confirmatory diagnosis we already saw how it looks on b scan what are the associations associations are failure to recognize can cause unpleasant refractive surprise post a cataract surgery so these are usually found when the axial lens are greater than 33.5 it should be considered if difficulty in obtaining a distinct retinal spike in a scan long axial length with inconsistent axial length recording should you know arouse a suspicion it's mostly located at the peripapillary region adjacent to but not centrally at the macula so in such cases when we need to make lens calculations i will power calculations we can use the hagstride plus lens star ls or we can use the z's iol master for calculations so we need to know types of posterior staphyloma the first five types are the simple one and the next six are the combined staph next five are the combined staphylomas so let's see what are these types so the type 1 involves the posterior pole so type 1 is posterior pole it is from 2 to 5 disc diopter nasal to the optic nerve or several disc diopter temporal to it So you can see nasal to the optic nerve, two to disc diopter, several disc diopter, temporal to it, the entire posterior pole. So next is type two. Type two is from disc to macula or somewhat beyond. Okay. So from the disc to the macula and somewhat beyond. So these temporal vascular arcades uh, set the limit for the upper and lower limits. Okay. Type three is your peripapillary type. Type three is one to two and a half disc diopter radius about the optic nerve. It's peripapillary. Type four is opposite to type two. This is nasal. Type two is temporal to the disc. This is nasal to the disc. It is optic nerve nasally for a variable distance. And type five is inferior to the disc. So the optic nerve, or slightly above it, inferiorly for a variable distance. Okay. So type six is uh, from type six onwards. They are combined staphylomas. Type six is a combination of type one, so the entire posterior pole, and temporal. So type one and type two. Type seven is a combination of type one and type three. So the posterior pole and peripapillary. Type eight uh, is a tired form, tired structure. And type nine is septal, and type ten is plicated staphyloma. So, in case of treatment for the last three types, like the ciliary, equatorial, and posterior staphyloma, if there is marked thinning present, then it can be treated with scleral and and or corneal patch grafting as per the need. However, we should keep it in mind that vision rarely improves with this treatment. the astigmatism present must be treated that helps in vision to an extent that's all we need to know about staphyloma if you found this video helpful please hit the like button share it with share it with your friends and colleagues if you have not already subscribed please subscribe to my channel hope this was useful thank you